Morning is six. We are going to carry on with our numeracy lessons today and we are going to continue looking at measurement, the topic of measurement and in this case we're going to be talking about angles. Um, now we want to be looking more on how we can identify the different types of angles and I would like you to just follow me along and make notes as you go. How to identify angles? ID standing for identify. Please take note of the spelling. It's angles, not angels. Angles, please. And it's necessary to identify angles because once you know what you're looking at, you can automatically start applying certain sets of rules that you'll learn about later on in order to calculate angles. But for today, we want to look at identifying angles. And with identifying angles, we just want to pay attention to looking at the angle and identifying whether it's an, a small angle, a medium angle, or a large angle, and the particular names that we give to them. There are five main types of angles. And these five main types can be listed. The most common one that you would have ever come across would be an angle that looks like this with this little box over there and that is called a 90 degree angle or right angle. And this is a very common angle. You see it wherever you go. It allows two objects to meet perfectly at a perfect square and this is also called perpendicular. That's an important word to remember. Perpendicular it simply means where two objects meet at exactly 90 degrees and you'll often see it like this it will be a line that meets another line and normally you wouldn't just guess and say that this line is perpendicular what you would first look for is this symbol here which shows you that line this one here this line meets that line at exactly 90 degrees. Now when something is perpendicular it is what we call a perfect square it is able to take a perfect corner and it is equal to 90 degrees as I've already said. So your first type of angle that we're looking at today is a right angled triangle. It is a perpendicular tri uh, angle sorry not not triangle just a right angle it is a perpendicular angle. It is also called a square angle. The second that we're going to be looking at is, let me get back to my blue pen, angle number two. This is an acute angle. Now, what's the first thing you say when you see something very small and fluffy, something like a baby puppy, a baby uh, sheep, a baby human. Um, this would probably be the girls that answer this question more than anything else because you guys are just more in tune with this type of thing than males are. When you see something small with big eyes and it's all fluffy and it's so cute, what's the first thing you say? so cute exactly and an acute and uh, that's so corny I'm sorry an acute angle is exactly that it is a small angle it is any angle less than 90 degrees that's it and by the way the symbol that I'm going to be using from now on for angle is that when you see this it just means 
I'm talking about an angle. So an acute angle is anything less than 90 degrees. That is anything along these lines. Now, here's the thing. When an angle is being identified, remember I said to you in the first lesson, there are always two angles being shown, the inside angle and the outside angle. So be sure of where the angle is pointing. Sorry for my very squiggly angles. Be sure of where the angle is pointing. If it is not pointing to the outside but to the inside and you can see that that is less than 90 degrees it is called an acute angle and how do you know it's less than 90 degrees it's quite easy you will see that it does not have that it does not have the square angle it does not have <laughs> I messed up that one let me go back and rub it out. It does not have the square angle. And that's it. That is the simplest way to identify an acute angle. It's less than 90 degrees. It is a very small angle. And it is cute. Sorry. Sorry about that. I will do better next time. Right. Let's look at the third one. Our third type of angle that we're looking at is what we call a we've done the 90 degree the right angle we've done the acute angle we're looking at an obtuse angle now o b t u s e obtuse angle now this angle is an angle that is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees so it falls between any angle between 90 degrees and 180 degrees so that is anything between a perpendicular angle and if you know what a 180 degrees is it is a straight angle which will be the next angle that we look at so it's any angle between 90 degrees and 180 degrees and it sort of looks like this so and obviously we'll be looking at the inside angle and it will be shown like this okay so you'll see that it is not exactly a straight line also, you will see that it is m not 90 degrees because it will be lacking the same symbol that we're talking about here. It won't have that symbol. It won't be showing that it's 90 degrees. And because of that, you know that it is, just by looking at it visually, it's either more or less than 90 degrees or 180 degrees. Those angles, any of them, become an obtuse angle. So let's just recap quickly on the three that we've looked at so far. We've got the right angle triangle. That is known as a square angle. It's perpendicular. Two lines that meet absolutely perfectly. Then you've got your acute angle. Very cute angle. It's very small. It's a baby angle. It is any angle less than 90 degrees. Then from 90 degrees going up to 180 degrees, you are now looking at what is called the obtuse angle. Now the angle after that, I'm just going to insert a new page here quickly. The angle coming after that is what I just spoke to you about. That's angle number four. And that is the straight angle. And the straight angle is exactly that. It is exactly 180 degrees. So it is often just denoted by a straight line arrows on each end and you'll have your angle marker on either side of that line just showing you that it's a straight line and they will show you that it is an angle they'll probably mark the center somewhere along the way it's very simple to identify 
Now you must remember now you must remember that a straight angle is always equal to 180 degrees. Any straight line, no matter where it is, is 180 degrees. Whether you measure it on the edge of your desk, on the floor of your room, on the edge of your TV screen, any straight line is always equal to 180 degrees. And that is important to remember because that rule will apply to our ability to calculate angles in the upcoming lessons. So please make note of this. Take note of it, highlight it, make it look pretty, whatever you need to do. That 180 degrees is always a straight line angle. And then our final angle that we're going to look at is... No, I don't want to highlight, I want that. What we call a reflex angle. And I like to think of a reflex angle as being a gymnastic, somebody who's extremely flexible, somebody that can bend backwards more than 180 degrees, and that is exactly what a reflex angle is. It is an angle more than 180 degrees, but less than 360 degrees and if you remember from last lesson 360 degrees is what we call a full circle rotation but less than 180 degrees ah uh, sorry 360 degrees any angle like this is a reflex angle so if you imagine a gymnast bending over backwards any angle that looks like this and this is the difference that's important to note between a acute angle and a reflex angle it's the angle marker now the angle is on the outside not on the inside as before and you can see that this angle has gone past I'll choose a different color here this angle has gone past 180 degrees it's gone past 90 degrees 180 degrees if I had to put these dots in here so that's 90 that's 180 that's 270 degrees but it has not yet completed the third the fourth right angle making it 360 degrees so it is more than 180 degrees less than 360 degrees so it could even be an angle that looks like this it could be an angle that looks like that but again the angle marker will be showing us the outside angle it will be showing us that not the inside angle that is the difference between um, a reflex angle and an acute angle now just to recap again top of the page how to identify angles there are five main types of angles the first one it's a 90 degree angle it's a very common one we see it everywhere around us it is also called a square angle or a perpendicular angle and it is always equal to 90 degrees important to remember that it's always equal to 90 degrees it's one of those angles that you need to take note of because it will also help you make sure that you are able to calculate unknown angles if you see that symbol, the square symbol, you know that even though there isn't a number written there, that is automatically 90 degrees. Our second angle that we spoke about was the little baby cute angle. It's a small angle, an acute angle. Take note of the position marker. It must be on the inside of the angle, not on the outside of the angle. Outside of that angle would be a reflex angle. Then comes to the obtuse angle. It's anything between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Again, if it was, uh, sometimes they would mark it for you on the exam paper. Not always though, but they would normally have a line there showing where 90 degrees is. Even if it's an angle drawn on its side like that, 
they would show where 90 degrees is and you can see that there's that much more than 90 degrees but it is still not exactly okay, we'll extend this line it's still not exactly 180 degrees so two 90 degree angles would make 180 degrees and you are looking at the one over here following the angle marker take note of that then we have got a straight angle that's our fourth angle which is exactly 180 degrees remember I said this is an angle that you need to remember because it is one of those things that helped that will help you to calculate unknown angles when you see a straight angle you will know that is 180 degrees even if the figure 180 is not given to you reflex angle last one this is any angle more than 180 degrees but less than 360 degrees um, again very easy to mix up from a an acute angle but in this case the angle marker is going on the outside okay so those are the first angles that we're going to be talking about the, the how to identify angles the second part of this lesson will be us identifying more on the angles themselves looking at them um, being able to identify which of these that I've just shown you is being displayed and also measuring them with your protractor remember that from last lesson you can measure on your screen uh, angles are not subject to scale so whether it's you enlarge it or you shrink it down the angle will always be the same and there's something that I want to point out in the in that next lesson concerning angles